Okay, today we are starting uh, chapter five, uh, and we're going to be doing adding and subtracting polynomials to start this off with. Okay, now a polynomial just means an equation with one or more terms. A term would be, for example, that. Actually, let me highlight it. It's easier to see. Okay, so a term. This has one term. This has two terms. Two terms. One term. But you have to notice... In the definition, okay, where A is a real number and N is a whole number, okay? So, let's look at these. N is the exponent. Is that a whole number? No. So, that is not a polynomial. Okay, now, A is a real number. Okay, A, oh, sorry, I didn't switch to highlighter. There we go. A is the number multiplying the variable. So A is 4. Is it a whole number? Real number, sorry, real number, yes. Yes. Yes, there's no x, but that's okay. Now, because that means the n is zero, basically. Now, but we still have a problem right here. Negative one is not considered a whole number. Our whole numbers are positive, zero through infinity. Now, a negative, because that turns it into a variable in the denominator, does not count. Okay, so this would not be... A polynomial but the rest definitely would be I need to get my little mat for resting my hand there we go. so I can write better all right I'm all set up okay now we have special names for certain types of polynomials okay a monomial has one term, a binomial has two terms, and a trinomial has three. Those are our most commonly used terms for different types of polynomials. Now, you can have quadnomials, you can have quintinomials, you can have many all different kinds, but mainly we use monomial, binomial, and trinomial. All right. Write a binomial with a degree of 2. Okay, so a binomial means two terms. A degree of 2 means that the highest degree is 2. So I would have something like this. The 3 doesn't matter what number you choose. You could write just x cubed squared, I mean, if you wanted. Then you have to have one more term. So I could have plus 2x. <laughs> I could have plus three. I could have anything I wanted to down here, just one more term, and it can't have a degree higher than two. So we're gonna do the two, we'll just do two. Write a monomial with a degree of five. Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. We can write uh, a constant, any constant, and then a variable to the fifth power. Or, The two powers add to five, so that would also be a degree of five. All right, descending order. Write a polynomial beginning with a variable term with the largest exponent. This is our standard form of a polynomial. So for this first one right here, that guy has to come first. Okay, next would be the squared term. Uh, minus 3x squared, 
And then next we have just x plus x. And then finally, we have a minus 4. So we start with the highest degree term, and then we write them in descending order. Now, if I didn't, let's say I didn't have an x squared, this would be simply 5, 4x cubed plus x minus 4. That would also be in the descending order. If you're missing one, just keep going, but they still have to be in descending order. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that minus 3x squared. Okay, now adding polynomials. When I add polynomials, I can add what's called like terms. Like terms means that the variable pattern is exactly the same. I have an a squared, I have an x and a y, or an x squared and a y. I can't ha add terms that don't have the exact same variables. Okay? That's just how this works. All right, so what that means is I'm going to add the two a squareds. 7 plus 10 is 17. Then I'm going to add the terms with just an a. Plus a minus 3 is minus 2a. And then I have a b, but I don't have any b over on the other side. So I'm going to just put in the b. Last will always come my constant alone. I have a 9 that's all by itself over here. So I have to add that on the end. So this would be the sum of those other two trinomials. All right, so now I look at B here. Okay, I have x squared y and an x squared y. So if I add 3 and 1, I get 4x squared y. And then I have an xy and an xy. So I add those two together. A minus 5 plus 4 leaves me with just a minus 1xy. And now I look at, I have just a y. Oop, I don't have just a y on the other one. So this is going to be plus y. And my 8x is all by itself. There we go. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing with the next one. Let's see, I have an a squared b. I have two a squared b's, one, two. I add those together, five and seven, and I get 12. a squared b. Okay, now I have a b, 1 minus 3 is going to give me a negative 2, so minus 2ab. And I have a b, 2b, and a minus b. So that's going to give me just plus b. 2 minus 1 is 1. All right, so that's my solution to adding polynomials of those two types. All right, we should jump into the next page. All right, now, one of the easiest ways is to line these up. All right, so to do that, you line them up according to the variable. So I have a squared. So I'm going to line those two up. I'm going to bring the minus 6a squared directly underneath it. I have a. So I'm going to line those up and bring the 4a directly below. And then I have a positive 4 that I'm going to line up. Now I just add these down the column. So. I have 2a minus 6, 2a squared minus 6a squared gives me a minus 4a squared. 
A plus 9 and a plus 4 gives me a plus 13. So I have plus 13a. I have a minus 10 and a plus 4 gives me a minus 6. So this would be my final answer. Okay, now the next one. I'm just going to line them up again. So first off, notice I don't have a 4x cubed. I have a 4x squared. So that 4x cubed, I have to kind of stick a 4x squared in here. Minus 5x minus 7. So 4x cubed. This doesn't have anything, so I have a plus 4x squared. Plus 3 minus 5 is a minus 2x. Minus 4 and a minus 7 is a minus 11 constant. Okay, that's my final answer. All right, let's look at this next one. Again, I have a cubed and a squared. And since I'm adding, it doesn't matter which order, so I'm going to stick my 6m cubed here and a 4m and a 9. So I have 6m cubed plus 6m squared plus 7m plus 1. Okay, that's just adding straight down the columns. Nothing to add to the 6m cubed, nothing to add to the 6m squared. 3 and 4 is 7, negative 8 and 9 is 1. And there we go. All right, now subtracting, you have to be careful. Careful, careful, careful. These negatives, they jump out and bite you all the time. So what I do is so that I don't forget as I work through the problem that I'm actually doing subtraction, I go ahead and I, if you will, distribute that negative in turning this into an addition. So this becomes an addition. That means I have a negative here and a negative there, and that becomes a plus. Now I can just add them. So I have 9a and 1a, so that's 10a squared. 3 and a minus 7, so that's a negative 4a. I have a 1 and a 10, so I have plus 11. That would be my final answer. This is doing it all right, in, with just the linear addition. Okay. Here, again, I have a minus. So I'm going to change this into a plus. I'm going to change this into a plus. I'm sorry, this doesn't line up super well on the iPad. Okay, and there we go. Now I've got those all changed. I've got a... 7a to the, f nope, I do not. I have a 2a to the 5th. Then I have a 7a to the 4th. I have 2a plus, nope, minus 5a gives me minus 3a. Sorry, this looks like it's a negative 1. It's a 4. Good grief. Come on. I said the thing doesn't line up super well. All right. And plus 6 and plus 2 is a plus 8. So that's going to be my final answer. Now, you have to be careful. When you talk about subtraction, oftentimes they're flipping it. They want this from... Sorry. They want this one from this one, which means... I'm going to have to subtract. So I'm going to rewrite this down here, right? Now, knowing it's a minus, oh, no, I have to do them in. Okay, so that means if this is a subtract, I'm going to change all the signs. Whoops, not that way. Okay, so this becomes a minus, a plus, and a minus. All right, so I have minus... Nope, nope, x to the third first, 6x cubed. I have a minus 3x squared, a minus 5x squared, so that's a minus 8x squared. I have a plus 4x and a plus 7x, plus 11x. I have no constant in the second one. 
I have a minus six in the first one. So that would be my final answer. It's much easier if we distribute that negative in. That's a weird minus. That's just regular subtraction. It just looks weird. Okay, so I'm going to turn it into a plus by making that a negative, changing all the signs in here. There we go. And now I can stack them. So I have 5a squared minus 13a and plus 19. So I have a negative 2a and a positive 5a. That's 3a squared. I have a, plus, nope, a minus 3a and a minus 13, so that's minus 16, plus 9, plus 19, plus 28. And that's my final answer. All right, so I'm going to subtract this. So my minus 3x squared, well, it has to hang out here because I don't have an x squared. Minus 8 becomes a plus 8. All right, so I have a minus 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7x. Negative 5 plus 8 is plus 3. And there we go. And that's the end of today's lecture. Uh, I hope this wasn't too difficult. If it is, let me know and we can talk. Bye-bye now.